Hey guys, it's uh, been a long time since I've done a, a YouTube lesson. Um, so I've kind of taken inventory of questions I get asked, and uh, rhythm changes tends to be a, a pretty popular um, topic. Uh, one thing I get asked is about intros. How do you bring in a rhythm changes other than you know starting off with the head at the very beginning? And I've been referring uh, some of my students to uh, some Slim Gaylord stuff. Now I'll let you know that you know he was a novelty singer uh, great guitar player great musician all the way around um, and he very Charlie Christian-esque in his guitar solos like his single note line uh, stuff and uh, he wrote a song I think it was a hit song for him um, flat fl if I can pronounce it right yeah flat foot floozy and I think he wrote that in 38 and uh, that was that was kind of a hit for him but everybody's recorded that and it's a standard. There's a great intro. The solos are awesome. Now, uh, Tiny Grimes did record this with Charlie Parker. And the intros are identical. And the intro is a really nice one. And it's a derivative of some of the uh, Mickey Baker um, ideas. And if I play a little bit of it, um, you should be able to n recognize the, uh, the melody. Um, but here... <laughs> But yeah, check this out right here. Here's the intro. And then you come into your rhythm changes. And it's great. It doesn't matter what version. And there's actually, there's a great, I think a four CD proper box set of Slim Gaylord. It'll, that's all you'll ever need. Um, and you have to siphon through some of it. Some of the, the lyrics are very corny, but that was, part of his his act so but any of them you go through you have the same thing so that was the first intro I played was with uh, Tiny Grimes now check this out here's a Slim Gaylord same intro now if you go through the whole catalog of songs that's a common way for him to bring in his uh, his uh, you know one six two five. Now he's playing in the key of F, so very simple. It's going to be an F six. Now remember with the uh, the Mickey Baker. Which I've covered in lessons before. Well, we're doing the same thing. We're going to voice a different. Now we're going to do something that's kind of common that I got uh, uh, from going through the Van Apps book and was reinforced uh, with my time with Jonathan Stout, is that you, you take these upper partials or mid partials, but you want to free up a finger to get those melody notes. And so back then when you're playing acoustic guitar, um, there's not a lot of sustain. So these chordal solos, these, these, um, these solo breaks these guys would have uh, would typically be very rhythmic in nature and they'd be rhythmic to sustain notes it just wasn't a whole lot of stain so you get these ideas and that could be part of something so what we have is um you know a, a, a carryover you know now what that is right there it could be a six chord you know, um, so it could be a four chord. So you could think about this one. You know, it could be some sort of like an altered four. The same thing right there. You could think it was a five too. The funny thing with these smaller chord notes, and you know, and I've heard this plenty of times from lots of people, is don't get hung up on what the pattern is, um, but what the song is doing in this, what what the chords are doing in the song. So, this could be a four major, but guess what? It could also be a five dominant, because you have right here the five dominant of F is going to be C. Or it could be a four major. Or a four major six, sorry. So, again, we have. Now we're gonna walk down to the five. Now how we're gonna do that is really interesting. We're gonna go back to this major seven looking thing right here, right? 
But what we're going to do is we're going to put that E note on the bottom. So it looks like a five major six. Now, the way that I'm thinking about this is remember the six, you know, if I add the flat seven, it becomes a 13th chord. So I'm thinking about it as a fragment of a 513. So, so when I get down to here, I'm thinking about that right there is like a like a C9. So I 13 to 6. There's no right or wrong way. Theoretically, some guys might tell me, you know, that's not the way to look at it. But all I know is I'm shifting to the 5 chord. That's what's happening. This is getting me to there. And then you can start on your, your you know, kind of those, uh, you know, or however you want to play your rhythm changes. So let me play this thing all the way through. So we have... Uh, measure that against the original here or one of the many takes like I said there's a lot of variance that could be happening here here it is so so there we go So one more time, chord shapes, major six, uh, diminished shape, minor shape, then major seventh shape, and then you're in on it. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, play one more time, and it sounds great, Those higher that higher register sounds really nice for uh, for that so obviously if, um, you run out of real estate about playing that thing if you're playing in a B flat but if you play a play this thing in the key of G F um, you can see that uh, has some E flat um, you have some uh, opportunity so one more time so ah, I'm sorry Enjoy, and I will talk to you all you guys uh, later. Take care. Bye.